I am very excited about today's episode because I am taking you to one of my very favorite towns to go thrifting in, Tacoma, Washington. a special weekend getaway plan with some good friends of ours in Tacoma and we were able to fit in quite a bit of antiquing and today I'm going to be taking you to one of my favorite areas in Tacoma and that is Antique Row. This is such a beautiful Hanukkah. I think that I'm gonna grab this one. It's only $25 and the mixed metal look is beautiful. It appears to be pretty old. And look at the detailing here. This one is stunning. And I think for $25, that's a really good price for this. It's so funny when you see something that you've had in your shop before. I had this exact same owl. It always seems like once I spot something, I spot another one, and it looks like today is gonna to be the day of owls. This is a really large carved wood owl, probably from the 1970s. Owls were all the rage back then. This one's kind of unique because it could probably be used as a vase or a giant candle holder. Mid-century modern clock heaven pile over here. These all look to be DIY projects. It looks like every single one of these has some kind of flaw and they are pretty rough. This one's even got some cracks. The pricing is really incredible. It looks like they're only asking $15 for these clocks. There's so much potential in this pile, but with our remodeling projects we have going on, I do not have time for any more projects. Somebody needs to get down here to Tacoma and buy this stack of mid-century clocks because these are really hard to find even when they are project pieces like this. With a little bit of love, these babies would be ready to hang on a wall. And I just spotted the sign behind the clock that says that this space is 50% off. So somebody needs to come down here and grab these. I am not fancy enough for caviar, but this is a really beautiful caviar dish. And I know that these do sell for quite a lot of money. Typically they would have a little knife here in this little front area and that would be how you would scoop up your caviar. If I could only have one thing in my shop, it would be a real toss up between pottery and lamps. I love lighting and so does my husband. So we always get really excited when we go out antiquing because we get to see different lights we've never come across before. The vendor in the very front corner of this store, kind of by the window area, has incredible mid-century modern pieces. We usually end up buying a piece from this shop and it's almost always from this space. 
I have a very similar set of Thai silverware that I'm going to get listed in my shop for an upcoming sale. It's very similar to this. It just has tea candles. How did I miss this massive mid-century vase mug thing? And they're only asking $32 for it. I don't know what brand this is. I've actually never seen one this large, but I am absolutely getting that for our upcoming Tiki party. I think this is going to be fabulous to put flowers in. No matter how many antique stores and thrift stores you go to, you will always see something that you've never seen before. And I'm not going to lie, this is the first time I have ever seen these crab bowls. How funny are these? They're by Henson's Woodcraft. They are so fun. They even have the serving spoon and fork with the little crab claws on the end. Last summer on my Highway 101 Oregon Coast trip, I picked up one of the most amazing Catherine Holm fondue pots. After that video was posted, a sweet subscriber sent me some of these long handled fondue forks because I only had the tiny little appetizer ones. I'll have to share my favorite fondue recipe in an upcoming episode. We are still on the hunt for our mid-century globe for our carport area, which we call the breezeway. This one is a little bit too small. We really want one that's closer to 20 inches in diameter, but we're having a hard time finding it. Every time I see bar stools and I'm with Jesse, I always point them out and I'm like, are these what you want for the bomb shelter? He's in charge of the bomb shelter bar and I don't get to pick the items that are going in there. And I still don't know what he's looking for, but he said that these were not it. Here are two more of these globes, but they are still too small. I feel like we are being taunted with these 16 inch diameter globes. There's gotta be some larger ones out there. It's pretty easy to tell right away if one of these is a newer production because of the weight on them. I have never seen her before. She's a beautiful piece of Mexican folk art pottery. They've only got $35 on her. I think this is such a beautiful piece. I want to take a look at the signature and see if I can find anything else. Ser Mel Mexico. I'll have to do some research on that and see if that is the artist's name, but this is a really beautiful piece. It almost looks a little bit Scandinavian with the way that they did the design on her eyes and her face. So pretty. I am on the hunt for a 1970s patchwork dress. I have been having the hardest time finding one in my size. I found a couple in the small size, but not any in my size. And I'm starting to think that maybe what I need to do is pick up one of these vintage quilts and sew my own dress. Have any of you guys ever done that before? Now these would be incredible to add to our Polynesian art collection. These are stunning and you can tell that they are actually very old. There's a pair of two of them and they're asking 150 each, which is out of my budget, but those are incredible.
I wish Michelle was with me right now. I know that she would absolutely love the details on this piece. This dress is made out of keys. And it says that it took 800 hours of work and it would weigh 30 pounds. That's crazy. I don't typically have the best luck with the Goodwills in the Tacoma area. I usually end up walking out with one or two items, but the last time I was up here, I found a James Mont ice bucket for only $9.99 at Goodwill. So I'm really hopeful that today I'm gonna to be able to find an awesome piece here. I've sold quite a few of these leather camels before in the past. I'm not gonna grab this one today because it's not looking very old to me and it doesn't have the beautiful bohemian colorful saddle that I love. Studio Pottery always does really well in my shop. The colors on this one are fun. It's a pretty amateur piece, but I really do like the size on it. They are asking, ooh, $5.99. That is a little bit steep for this piece. I'm gonna have to pass on that. Even though he's really cute, I'm gonna have to pass on it. Brass candle holders always do really well. I feel like they're timeless and a good investment. This one is only $1.99, so I'm going to grab that. Whenever I have my cups displayed out on my open shelving, I always put them in a brass caddy, partly because it's a guarantee that my cats aren't going to knock the cups over. This one's only $5.99, and I think this might work with some cups that I got last summer, so we're going to grab this. I really only found the brass caddy at the Goodwill. I'm quite surprised because I feel like I walk out of Goodwills in my area with a whole cart full. Caddies are so convenient and great when you're entertaining and you need to carry things out to your back patio table or even to display them on your open shelving in your kitchen. Even though I didn't find much at Goodwill, I at least didn't walk away empty handed. I'm currently in the middle of reorganizing and decorating my shop area where I ship all of my vintage from. And I think these little baskets will work great to hold little jewelry boxes and extra packing tape. So this is the first time I have come across one of these. I used to think that these were made out of carved wood when I saw pictures of them, but they are actually handmade Peruvian pottery candle holders, and I think they are so beautiful. Shortly after our trip to Tacoma, I got an Instagram message from Kelly, who has a vintage store called The Rustic Hippo. And I'm gonna put her Instagram handle right here so you guys can go and check her out. In the message, she let me know that she was pretty sure that Jessie's bucket list find, Birds in Flight, was at her local antique mall. Kelly has an incredible space at the South Tacoma Antique Mall, and she was kind enough to go in there and take a few pictures and send them to me just to make sure that it was an authentic C. Jerry Birds in Flight. Now, Jesse has been wanting this piece for so many years. This is like his Bitosi bowl to him. This is his number one bucket list item that he has been looking for forever. They retail online upwards of $1,500. 
So not only was it the birds in flight that we were looking for, but it was in the very, very rare matte black. And I don't know if you've seen many teasers of our new home, but we have a lot of matte black finishes going in there. So we were ecstatic and we got in the car and she put it on hold for us and we drove up to get it. We are so grateful that you reached out to us. It was such an incredible deal and we are just thrilled to have it in our home. Feels pretty good. Great. Let me come give it a little. Let me give it a little test. Actually, that does feel pretty strong. Right? Yeah, I think I think that'll work. Okay. Sweet. Flight. Let's see. You like it? I think it looks really good having the clock here and then that, and then that still leaves me a little bit of decorating room on top of the piano or some pottery or something. So Kelly and her husband have two spaces at the South Tacoma Antique Mall, and we bought something else from each of those spaces. And I feel like we were walking into that store just checking off bucket list items. spotted the Zeppelin blimp cocktail shaker first and Jesse had gone to use the restroom because it had been a long drive to Tacoma and so when he was in the bathroom I saw it on the shelf and I picked it up saw the price tag on it I knew we were gonna be buying it but I wanted him to find the item so I actually put it back on the shelf and when he walked out of the bathroom I said take a look at Kelly's space here and tell me what we're going home with and it took him about three seconds and he immediately saw it and was like yeah that's awesome Not Dumbledore, babe, that's Gandalf. Snape is right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. We're looking for a curved couch, but this one is a newer model and a little bit too big. Funny story about the Raya rug. My very first Raya rug I ever found, I sold. And it was because it was in the yellow and red color combination and it just wasn't quite right. I'm always doing what I call upgrading. So I will find a piece and then I will sell it for a full retail and then I will use that money to buy the piece that I really, really want. So after I sold the yellow and red Raya rug, I used that money to invest in my blue and green one. And it's got really good shag on it so it hasn't been worn and the colors are so vibrant and not faded. But I also knew that I didn't wanna have such a bold piece down in my main living space because I'm really going for a very calm look down there. The neutral colors in the rye rug that I found in Kelly's space I think are going to go perfect with what I've got planned for our main living space.
so bad having to take out all of the eggs out of that piece of pottery, but I really wanted to bring it home with me, so I put them in another bowl. And I'm really glad that I did because it ended up being a very high-end piece of Japanese pottery. At first, I thought based on the glaze and the finish and that pedestal style that it was going to be an Italian piece of pottery. So I was very surprised and grateful when a subscriber here on YouTube mentioned that they were pretty sure that it was a Japanese piece. So thank you to that subscriber for pointing that out. You got me going in the right direction and I was able to confirm that it was a Japanese piece. One of my very favorite places to go out to dinner with my husband is McMinimins and they have them all over here in the Pacific Northwest and a lot of the locations are actually hotels too. And this is a very special place here in the Pacific Northwest because I feel like it takes that quirky uh, Portland style and they put it all into a building. And these things are packed with antiques that the owners have sourced from all over the West Coast. If you stay here at the Tacoma McMinimins Elk Lodge, make sure you ask for a room on the top floor, which is the atrium level. And ask for one of the rooms that overlooks the Spanish steps. These are the best rooms in the entire building because they overlook the city skyline and you've got this amazing view of their recreation of the Spanish steps there. This particular location also has concerts and they have a beautiful patio out by the Spanish steps where you can get dinner around a fire pit. The rooms are beautiful, the food is great, and there is something special about staying in such a unique place that has so much history. It's not the biggest collection, but I'm pretty happy. Most of these things have been thrifted for just a dollar or two. We've got some really great trays. I love to entertain and have people over and have a very large family. So having a lot of these different bowls to put snacks in throughout the house and in the backyard is going to be great. We are going to host our first tiki party this August with all of our family and friends. And it's gonna be so fun to pull these pieces out and just have a really fun time with everyone. These are gonna be great for putting lots of snacks on. And the newest addition we got in Tacoma, I think I'm gonna to use to put large tropical flowers in it. I think that would be so pretty as a centerpiece on maybe the main table. It is ginormous. It's such a fun piece. I love the colors and the design on it. And I can't believe I got it for such a good deal. This house is slowly starting to feel like a home and each little corner that we get put together makes me really excited because we are moving in the house this weekend with the boys. And even though the house is not finished, having spaces that feel put together are really making this feel like it is our home. So this is gonna be a fun weekend and I love the rug so much. I cannot believe that we found this there. This neutral colored one is exactly what we needed in this space so that it wouldn't be too overwhelming. And now I can have my accents of blue and green be in my art 
and of course my plants and my favorite thing to collect, the pottery. These are some of my favorite pieces. These are by Victoria Littlejohn. The color, the texture, the shape are all fantastic. I really like to mix in these pieces that have an organic feel and they go perfectly with these Alvino Bagney pieces. These are from his Sea Garden series and the size of this jug is just enormous. I found these two pieces down in Corvallis, Oregon when I found my Potosi bowl. And of course, nothing is ever completely finished because as a vintage shopper and reseller, things are always changing. But I do feel like a lot of these pieces are forever pieces. I have this one sold right now. I just posted it in my last First Friday sale. And so that actually needs to get shipped out this weekend. I thought this was really neat that it had the original tag still on here from April 23rd, 1971 and it is a carved wood Russian piece. Such a stunning candle holder. I'm so happy for whoever bought this. Thank you for the support, and I hope you love it. I think it's a really, really special one, and I've never seen another one in my life, so I think this is going to be loved by the new owner. We have several piano players in our family. Unfortunately, not me. Um, I played the clarinet when I was young, so I've never really given too much of a shot. I think I can play Happy Birthday and a Free Willy song on here. But jesse has been working on learning how to play, and when our other family members come over, they love to get out and start playing. It's so fun. And I think the only thing about this space that I would change is the black shiny is not quite my style. There's actually a piano that has kind of been on my bucket list to find. I'll pop in a picture to show you that one. I know two people who have found it secondhand. Um, one of them got it for free, even though it's worth thousands of dollars. So if I ever do see one of those pianos out in the wild, I will pick it up. But for now, this black one is gonna stay because even though it looks a little formal and it's shiny, I love having the piano here and hearing the music when everyone comes over. And who knows, maybe someday I will learn how to play it, but probably not. So the lesson of today's video is that if you are making a trip to Tacoma, Washington, do not skip the South Tacoma Antique Mall because they had really great stuff. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today and coming on both of my trips to Tacoma. And I hope you guys had a blast getting to see what I found in Tacoma and how I decorated with it. Don't forget to subscribe because I've got some really awesome content that I'm working on editing right now and I don't want you to miss it. So hit that subscribe button and I will see you in a brand new episode soon.